What's going on guys, my name is Anthony and welcome back to your fifth tutorial in the basics of Java game development. Um, so in this tutorial I'm just going to be teaching you guys how to move our dude across the screen from left to right. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it, but there's a little bit of technicalities that you have to get through in order to actually get something animating on your screen. So let's get started right away. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be implementing an interface. Now for those of you who don't know who, what interfaces are, I suggest you go look it up online or um, I'm not quite sure but I think I have a tutorial on interfaces. I'm not sure. But if I don't, just go look it up online. They're not too hard. But you really don't need to know how to create one, you just need to know how to use one for this tutorial. So to use one we're going to go implements and then we're going to be implementing um, an interface called action listener. Now action listener basically does what it sounds like. It listens um, it listens to your program for any animations that you want to do for any um, keyboard presses that you want to that you're doing or whatever like that. So it's everything to do with animation and um, actions within your program. So to do this we're just going to implement action listener and then you're gonna want to hit this little red ball and add the import and then there's another red ball that comes up and you're gonna need to implement all the abstract methods now for this interface there's only actually one method that we're gonna be using to animate our dude on our screen so uh, to animate our guy on the screen you're gonna want to actually create variables for his position so in the last tutorial we just made him static so he's only staying at 100 100 uh, for this tutorial you're gonna create another variable called private int x comma y and just set these equal to 100 and 100 now that's just gonna be its default location we're obviously gonna be updating these variables within our action performed method so to do that we're gonna actually put X into our draw image for its X location and Y into the draw image for its Y location now if we save this right now um, and run it nothing's gonna happen yet until we actually animate it within our action perform method but before we actually do that we're gonna have to do a couple little underlying technicalities um, for those of you who play games you're gonna know about frames per second now this is basically how fast your um, your graphics card is rendering bleh, rendering the actual graphics on the screen <clears throat> now in order for your uh, Java application to render you're gonna need a timer so type in timer you can make it a private timer because we're not gonna be accessing it anywhere else so private timer and we'll call it T just for simplicity now um, hit the little red ball and you're gonna want to import the right timer now the one we're gonna import is called javax.swing.timer don't import anything else because uh, it won't work for Java or for swing uh, this is the one you want now in order to initialize our timer for the proper refresh rate we're gonna go into our uh, constructor here now you're gonna go t equals new oh, not mu new timer and the first parameter is your time that you want to re uh, like how quickly you want your program to refresh in milliseconds so it's going to be refreshing every seven milliseconds and we're going to go seven comma this now again just bear with me with this it's basically saying that you want this class to have the timer and have all the animations um, in layman's terms but we're never going to do anything different again just make sure you remember this seven comma this so now that we've done this we actually have to start our timer by going t dot start now when this program executes our timer will automatically start so we could right away start seeing animations and updates on our screen <clears throat> so now that we have this we can actually start to animate um, our dude so to do this in our action perform method it's very simple all we have to do is go x is equal to x plus one now this will actually make him move across the screen from left to the right if we want x is equal to x minus one he would have went from right to left now I don't think I forgot anything here 
probably did, so I don't know if this is going to work. Um, but actually, yeah, I did forget one thing. Right underneath here, you're going to want to call a method called repaint. Now this basically just tells Java that you're going to want to refresh the screen. So to do that, we could just type repaint, and we're going to want to run this. And as you can see, we got a, di <laughs> a dude sliding across the screen, and he's making a big old white streak, and he just went off the screen. Um, he's making the white streak uh, because of this. We're going to actually have to go into our paint component class and tell it that you want to actually clear the screen every time the um, the animation renders. So basically we don't want that smudge to go across the screen. In order to do this you're going to want to go super dot paint component and then basically just hit enter and then it'll fill in the rest for you. It just puts in G as a parameter and all this does is basically say that we want to clear the screen. I don't know why they didn't make it a little more intuitive but that's how they did it. And now if we hit re F6 to run, we'll see that he doesn't leave that white smudge on the screen anymore. And yeah, so he anim animates quite nicely. And now if we wanted to actually update the Y location while the X location is being updated, right underneath there, we could just go Y is equal to Y plus one. And if we run this, he'll go in a diagonal motion, just like that. So he slides off the screen again. Um, and yeah, that's about all he all he does. So to kind of explain this a little better, we created a timer up here. Now timer was initialized to refresh every seven milliseconds. So basically every seven milliseconds, we're going to be calling this function over and over and over again. Now the repaint method basically just says, okay, it's been seven milliseconds. Now go to the top again and do this again. So that's why we get that smooth looking animation or somewhat smooth looking animation going across our screen because we're updating every seven milliseconds so our eye can't actually see the individual frames <clears throat> so yeah that's about all I have for this tutorial I'm gonna be teaching you guys a little bit more after this um, I think I'm gonna teach you guys how to make it go in another direction once it hits one of the walls uh, just so it's a little bit cooler and a little more functional so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.